So if you need to modify permissions, this is how you do it. The caveat is you can only modify permissions for files that you own for obvious reasons. If anyone can modify anyone's permissions, then what would be the point of permissions in the first place? Um, sometimes you need to modify permissions. Sometimes you need to modify permissions for files that you don't own. There is one user on the computer that can basically do anything. It's called the root user, uh, just R-O-T. That's essentially like the master admin on any Linux system. On all of you guys' virtual machines, you actually have root privileges, so you can do anything the root user could do, but you have to run a command called sudo first. So bear with me for a moment, and I'll come back and explain this. Okay. So just for demo's sake, I've created another file not owned by me. This file is owned by the root user, or it could be owned by any other user for that matter. Um, but if I go, so right now I can, everyone can only read this file, right? So I can read the file, it's empty, I do cat test, I get nothing, but if I go try to edit the file, and if I start to type and I go to save, you'll notice it doesn't even, it blacks out save, it doesn't even let me hit save because I don't have permission to write this file right now. So. If I want to give myself permission to write this file, what I essentially need to do is, right now I'm in the everybody group, right? Respect to root, because I'm not root, and I'm not the root group, so I need to change this everybody permission, right? So if I needed to change this permission so that I could edit it, it's gonna be chmon, and then we can just do, we'll just do 666 which gives everyone permission to read and write the file, right? That's going to be 110, 110, 110, um, where this last number is what I actually care about. I'm just keeping the first two more or less the same. If I run this command on test, you'll see operation not permitted, obviously, because I'm trying to change permission on someone else's file. So this is where the fact that you guys all have what we call root access comes in handy. So there's a, man called, there's a command called sudo, this stands for super user do. This command basically means run whatever command comes after it as root. Not everyone can do this. If you go into the C cell and try to use the sudo command, it's not going to let you. Because in the C cell, you guys don't have root permissions because you'd all go and wreck the computers for everybody else. But on machines you own, or like the virtual machine, you'll almost always have this sudo, right? Um, if you install Linux on your own, that first user you set up always has this sudo, right? This basically gives you the ability to administer the entire system. So sudo just means run the following command as though you are root, as though you are this master user to whom no rules apply. So I'm going to do the same command that is ran. Again, another pro tip, the arrow keys will let you scroll up and down through your command history. So if I want to go back to the last command without typing it in, I just hit the up arrow. Then I'm going to type in sudo in front of it this time. So if I do this, and it's going to execute. When you guys run this, it'll probably ask you for your password. The default password on the virtual machine is just user, all lowercase, same as the username. If you've changed it, it's whatever you've changed it to. Uh, the first time you use a sudo command, it'll ask you for your password. Subsequent times, it won't until you wait long enough, and then it'll ask you again. So whereas before, it told me it couldn't do it, when I do sudo, it says that it can go ahead and lets me do it. So now if I do ls-al, You'll notice I've changed the permissions so that everyone can write it. If I now open up that file, even though I'm still not the owner, now it'll let me save things. And if I cat it, I should see my changes. Makes sense? There's another command. I'm not going to go over the details of it, but you can read about the man page. chown allows you to change the ownership for a file. So if I didn't want to just allow myself to write this, but if I wanted to actually change it so that I owned it, I could use the chown command. And you can read the man page all about it. Uh, does anyone here read the webcomic XKCD? Yeah. OK, good. You're killing me, guys. Um, XKCD is a super nerdy webcomic. You should all check it out. It is wonderful. Um, I can probably show you the most famous XKCD joke now, and you'll maybe get it. Uh, this actually dates back a couple of years, but we will pull it up real quick. 
as soon as Firefox decides it wants to open. In the meantime, I'm going to delete both those test files. Uh, go Firefox, go. Uh, I may have to show this later because I don't know if it will connect. Yes, OK. So now you can get a lot more nerd humor than you would have gotten yesterday. Uh, seriously though, go read XKCD, and when you don't understand the joke, go look it up, because you'll learn something probably about computer science or some other obscure field of math or science while you're at it. Uh, it is great, or maybe you'll hate it, but it's great. So that's all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete those two files, that test and that test. So uh, if I do rm test star, I'm going to get both of these in one command, right? Because the star is going to be in both the link and with the tilde after it. So if I do rm test star, both of those are gone, and I'm good to go. So questions on reading files, writing files, looking at the permissions, changing the permissions, all of that kind of jazz.